Hi and welcome to the MyGrow YouTube channel. My name is Shane and I'm the founder of MyGrow. If you've got an interest in horticultural lighting and growing indoors, then this should really be of interest to you because we're going to look at the effects of different coloured light on plant growth. We're doing a fairly rudimentary test in that we're testing white, blue and red light and its effect on plant growth, but it should give you a good indication of what different characteristics you'll get when growing under different colours of light with your plants. In the setup of the experiment, we've been very careful to make sure that the light intensity under the uh, grow areas is exactly the same for each of the setups. So we've got three different setups, three different light colours, but this exactly the same light intensity at the, le the canopy level of the plants. So we've set them up with gar um, bedding plants and with lettuce. So we've got flowering plants to look at the characteristics of flowering that change with the light, different lighting colour. And we've got some lettuce which will show us about different levels of productivity and um, we'll be able to take dry weights and all that sort of thing. So we set up the experiment some weeks ago. So let's have a quick look at that. We've got a time-lapse grow then to go through and you'll see the the plants growing up over the last three weeks during the course of the experiment and then we're going to look and see what we found at the other end and show you the results and draw our conclusions from that. So here goes. So let's have a look at each of the growing bays. We'll start in the full spectrum bay, easier to inspect than the others. So if we look at the front at the bedding plants, we've got the marigold here, which continues to have one bloom and another one just opening. Um, the begonia is doing quite well, looking nice and healthy, new sprouts, new shoots, new growth, uh, sort of medium amount of flowers. The chrysanthemum is not doing anything at all. It looks healthy and alive, but not flowering. The lettuce, on the other hand, now is doing very well. You can see down the side, it's kind of standing up. Uh, it's quite thick, dense growth. You can see my shoots coming up the inside. So yeah, doing well. On the red side, we've got really nice flowers on the begonias looking healthy and in fact dropping some petals so looking really good. The marigold is looking nice it's got an extra bloom just coming up um, and the chrysanthemum is doing very little like the the white side. We get to the lettuce then it's quite different it's very rangy or stretchy it's hanging over the edge here quite long and coming right down the side um, looking inside, looks lighter, doesn't look as dense in terms of the growth. On the blue side, very interestingly, the marigold has one extra bloom here and a few other coming up, so it's doing well. The begonia's uh, flowering, quite healthy, hasn't really grown to the same extent. Um, and the chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, as with the other ones, hasn't really done anything. Big difference here is in the lettuce, which is really light and feathery. It's not, um, hasn't grown very much at all. Uh, it's quite dense growth, hasn't stretched certainly, but not looking very good. So let's take these out and have a look at them under regular white light so we can see them side by side. On the left is the full spectrum, the middle, the right, the red and the right, the blue. You can see that the full spectrum, the one exposed to full spectrum and red light are very similar. The begonias have good amount of flowers, quite a lot of development of the plant. The marigolds have developed a little bit and are continuing to flower. Very, very similar between the two. Big differences though in the ones that were under blue light. So the begonias haven't developed as much at all and not as much flowering, not as large flowers, not as large petals, uh, not as large leaves. However, defying all expectations, the marigold has an increased numbers of flowers 
even though the plant growth is less. So a bit of an anomaly there, wasn't expecting. Well, here we have the lettuce examples out of the grow basin under white light. On the left is the full spectrum light, the middle is the red light, and the right one was under the blue. Let's have a look at them closer. The one under the full spectrum light has good leaf colour, nice development inside the plant, quite bushy. You can see it's, it's standing up and quite thick growth there. So looking very healthy and nice. Under the red light, much more stretched, a paler colour. You can see the leaves hanging down the sides, they're, they're just not as thick and as, as uh, healthy. And you can see in the growth, if you can see that there, but quite a lot of stretching up and down the stalks. So a lot of productivity, but not looking as healthy as the full spectrum. And then we get to the blue light, which is really dramatically different. Uh, lots of colour, so very dark green, um, but very restricted growth, uh, poor development, not, um, not very impressive at all in comparison to the other three. So it'll be interesting now to see what the weights are going to be. And uh, so let's take the harvest and measure the wet weights. And we have the results from the weighing of the, the wet harvests. We have the full spectrum grow uh, delivered 389 grams. The red light grow delivered 409 grams. So 5% of a difference between them as near as makes no difference. But we had a very poor result for the blue grow. It was 168 grams. So um, just half of what the other two were in terms of yield, so not really in the races at all. So very interesting between these two that they were so close, uh, considering that we had the same light levels hitting each of the grows, to deliver so closely was, was very interesting. Certainly when you think about the proportion of green light in the full spectrum, the view is about the place that the green light is, is useless and, and, and uh, doesn't photosynthesize and has no effect at all. Well, if that were the case, we'd likely to be 30 or 40 percent down on the full spectrum grow. But as, um, as most of the science backs up, you know, all, all of the um, photons uh, contribute to growth, just some contribute more than others. And in this case, there's a very clear differentiation with the blue light where uh, some is good, um, it gives a balanced growth, it gives you a higher density, uh, shorter internodal spacing, that sort of thing. But too much is, is non-productive, so keep it down to a minimum. And the conventional wisdom is, is somewhere around 15 to 20 percent of blue light will be sufficient to keep your growth contact, compact and dense, um, but be as productive and, and efficient as possible. So some of the other characteristics, just again briefly, is, is the short dense growth under the blue light, short internodal spacing, smaller leaf and flower size. We got the red flowers, the red light, uh, you know, seemed to deliver a little bit more on the flowering side. Larger leaf size, larger petal size, high productivity, but the downside is, is the stretching. And then we have the full spectrum light where we have uh, good, good productivity, good dense growth, um, nice colouring, um, healthy appearance, uh, medium petal and flower size, very close to the, the red in terms of flowering, but overall producing the most, uh, most desirable result really. So I hope you enjoyed. It's a fairly basic experiment, but hopefully gives you a good feel for the effects of different coloured light on, on growing. And uh, we're going to explore the topic further with more subtle nuanced variances in the light recipe to plants to see which ones are optimum. 
or what differences you get from, from changing the recipe. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please subscribe and take care.